Hey everyone, it's Max here from Reptile Fanatics. Now, this is the planter base for my native gecko enclosure. Now, you need to have a permit to keep native geckos in New Zealand. That comes from the local authority dock. You can't just go and catch them out of the wild. There's a big no-no, but anyway, you can get these planters on Facebook Marketplace, Mata 10, Bunnings, Home Depot, wherever you are in the world. Fairly, really simple. Most people use these just for plants. I've also put some castles in the bottom. I've lined it with plastic polythenes to make sure once the potting mix goes in, it doesn't rot the wood. Otherwise, it's 60 centimeters by 60 centimeters. Now, let's go check to see what potting mix I have used. All right guys, just use some standard 40 liter potting mix. I actually needed two bags, just got it from down the road, but let's see how I've put this all together in this quick preview. All right guys, this is the final uh, piece, but not fully finished. This is once I've put the enclosure on, I've put in my first final and finishing touches at the bottom in regards to securing the actual enclosure, built out of plywood with mesh and persplex. As you can see, it's been stained to make sure it's nice and treated and maintains its, as much durability outside as it can. I have filled the bottom with potting mix. I've planted three native plants, so these will grow nicely over time. There's a litter of loose bark and leaves on the floor to make it look extremely natural kind of going for the beachy with like the beach look as in b-e-e-c-h forest look which is where a lot of these native species flourish and thrive and like to and a lot of this vegetation will grow right so it's a nice sunny day in christchurch all right so this is the exterior it's about 120 centimeters tall so it's quite tall now this is an arboreal species that i plan to keep um obviously i'm gonna try and have about two three lizards in here but otherwise, let's look further. Alright guys, so as you can see I've added some branches, just some more uh, areas for the gecko to be able to climb. Now there's all that space there that I need to fill in because these are, like I said, it's an arboreal species I plan to keep. And they like to explore up high, they want to be up in the height of the trees. They don't spend too much time on the bottom uh, being an arboreal species. But as you can see I filled in a bit more native vegetation. I've tried to do my best to stick to just native vegetation to make it replicate and mimic the environment they actually live in New Zealand. But guys. These are amazing creatures. They're only located in New Zealand. You can only keep them in New Zealand. So we are very fortunate to keep the most stunning species of geckos and lizards in New Zealand. So very fortunate, super stoked. Finally got my permit, finally got the enclosure build. As you can see, I'm filling it in a lot more throughout the day and it's starting to look, look really, really, really good, but not quite finished. So I went down the road and went for a walk and I wanted to get some more bits and bobs for it. So I got some loose, loose bark that had been come off a nice big trunk and also this long, nice, real dry, almost like a bit of driftwood. But I thought I'd throw it in there. But let's have a look with the almost final piece. Look at it. It's looking like a jungle when I love it. It looks like a absolute bush. Something you'd see in the wild. Lots of branches, lots of leaves. Lots of, uh, I guess, things where the gecko can climb. I've even put a little piece of uh, pine or, uh, so I should say, a little branch at the top so you can actually go up the top and sun and 
bask right at the top of the enclosure, right with the meshes, right with this full sunlight. But as you can see, a lot of space for the gecko to climb and hide. I guess with creating microclimates, you need to have a lots of areas for shade, lots of areas for them to hide, to climb, to be able to regulate the body temperature, especially in Christchurch, it gets super hot during the day, during the summer. We've had 28, 29, 30 degree days. And obviously in the wild, they're gonna escape from that heat because that is just too hot even for reptiles. So let's keep looking. Now here is my male juvenile Northland Green Gecko. He is absolutely stunning and legit looks like a Velociraptor. Look at that head and that beak on them. Honestly, they look like a green Velociraptor. You know, I was very fortunate enough to get a Northland Green Gecko down in Christchurch. A keeper was very, very generous to give me one of her spare juvenile males and I'll end up getting him a couple of girlfriends at some point, the two to one ratio. But look at him, exploring his enclosure, super cool to see. This is him also just exploring the back. He spent a lot of time in the depths on the first day, just exploring, staying safe, feeling quite, I guess, safe in the background, being quite hidden still, but I was able to spot him a couple of times and look at that coloration. He ends up having uh, two white stripes down his back, but we'll get, get a better glimpse of that shortly. Now one thing I learned about these geckos is they actually have a blue inner mouth. So they have an amazing blue interior of their mouth and they have a nice little cute little pink tongue, but absolutely stunning creatures. Now, as you can see, he's got a lot of white stripes on them and it's just an absolutely gorgeous animal. So obviously on, uh, like I'm new to keeping these native uh, species geckos, especially these green guys. Now on the third day, I couldn't find them anywhere. I couldn't find them anywhere in the cage. I went out there multiple times and I started to freak out. And then that evening I went out again and I was like, he has to be in there. And I realized that they actually come out at night to hunt and he was out and he was super active at night. And it was super cool to see that these guys are not only out a diurnal species but they're fairly nocturnal in nature where he was out in the early evening hours just after 10 o'clock where it just got dark and he was hunting flies so super cool i started freaking out first obviously going through all the enclosure throughout the day and just freaking out thinking he has, had escaped but then i thought nope it's, this is an amazing enclosure i've super sealed it and it's super super secure and here he is exploring in the evening i hope you enjoyed this one guys